We have covered the circular functions, the sine, the cosine and the tan, and also their inverses, the arc sine, arc cosine and arc tan. Now what we want to do is cover the hyperbolic functions. So let's have a little comparison first of all between our circular function and our hyperbolic functions. Now we're not going to get into this in minute detail, we only want to have a quick recap of the fundamentals of our hyperbolic functions. So let's make a comparison between our circular functions and our hyperbolic functions. Now our circular functions are the trig functions sine, cos and tan. And we said that if we had a unit circle, so that's a circle with radius 1, then the sine is given by the opposite over the hypotenuse. If the length of the hypotenuse is just 1, so it's just the length of this line here divided by 1, which is just this length. So the sine of this angle theta is just this length. And the same goes for the cosine. It's given by the adjacent, which is this length here divided by 1. So the cosine is just this length. And we can get the tan by dividing this length here, which is the opposite, divided by this length here, which is the adjacent. So this has all been done previously, and we've seen it in the previous videos. And we notice that as this point rotated round about the circle, then it's going to map out the sine, cosine and tan functions. Now, when we looked at the circular functions, we thought about the idea of angle as generated from splitting the circle in, initially into 360 small values, which we called degrees. Now, we said that that is quite an arbitrary uh, value, and we decided to use the value of radians rather than the value of degrees. And we said that one radian was the angle which is subtended by an arc, which is equal in the length to the length of the radius. So it meant that we could define the value of our arc length. So let's say our arc length is the value s. We could say that it's just going to equal r, which is the radius, times the angle theta. Now, if the value for our r, again, is just the radius, which is 1, we can say that the value s, which is our arc length, is just equal to our angle theta in radians. Now, as a lead into hyperbolic functions, what we're going to do is we're going to think about the angle here, theta, in terms of the area of the little sector that it generates. So as this vector here rotates round, the angle theta is going to increase. And as the angle theta increases, the area that it sweeps out is going to increase as well. Now we can work out a relationship between the angle theta and the area of the sector. If we think about the area of the entire circle, it's going to be given by pi r squared. Now the area of this little sector is going to be a proportion of that entire area of the circle. Now the proportion of the area of the sector to the entire circle is going to be in the same ratio as the proportion of the length, arc length here of the sector to the entire circumference of the circle. So if we call the arc length of this sector the value of s and we divide that by the entire circumference of the circle which is 2 pi r then this is going to give us the proportion of the sector here relative to the, the entire uh, area of the circle. So we can cancel out the value for pi in the top and the bottom line, and we can cancel one of the r's from the top and the bottom line as well. And we know that the arc length here, s, is just given by the length r times the angle theta. So the s is replaced with r theta, but the value of r is just the value 1. So we're just left with the area a 
is equal to theta upon 2, or equivalently we could say theta is equal to 2a. So in this case here, whenever we sweep out this area, we can say that the area is going to be directly proportional to the angle theta. So it means that for a circle with radius 1, we can work out the angle theta in radians because it's going to be twice the area of the sector. Or equivalently, we could work out the area of the sector and it's going to be equal to half of the angle theta in radians. So now we'll look at the hyperbolic functions. Now historically the hyperbolic functions were generated by taking a conic section and cutting it down in this manner here. So you can see it's cut vertically. And when we cut it vertically, you see we're going to generate these little curves. So that's one there and that's another one here. So these curves are redrawn here and it's in effect taking the conic section and turning it on its side. So for example, this curve here is this curve here and this curve here is this curve here. So these curves here are hyperbolas and they're given by the equation x squared minus y squared is equal to 1. Now you can see that in this unit circle the, it's given by the equation x squared plus y squared is equal to 1. So they look very similar, just the difference of the minus and the plus here. Now we can generate the sinh function by dropping the perpendicular from our hyperbola to the x-axis and that's this length here and we can generate the cosh function by connecting the hyperbola to the y-axis and that's this distance here. Now note that the value for our sinh phi isn't equal to the ratio of this length here to this length here and the cosh phi isn't equal to the ratio of this length here to this length here as we seen it was with the, the circular functions. The value for our sinh phi is just this length, it's not the ratio and the value of our cosh phi is just this length here, it is not the ratio. Now in the hyperbolic functions the angle phi is defined in terms of an area and the area is between the x-axis, this line in yellow and the hyperbola in blue. So that's this small area here. And again we can show that this angle phi again is equal to twice that area. Now we're not going to go proving this here, it's out with the scope of the course. Also note that the circular angle theta is not the same as the hyperbolic angle phi and we can see that because we defined the angles theta and the angles phi in terms of areas and this area here is going to be different from the area we have here. So let's go ahead and we'll have a look at this in the graphical calculator. Now let's take our time and we'll talk through our first hyperbolic function, which is going to be our sinh function. Now we're starting off with the hyperbola, which you see in blue. And this is just the expression x squared minus y squared is equal to 1. Now we can also draw the unit circle here and we can compare the unit circle with the unit hyperbola. Now the hyperbola is asymptotic on the lines y is equal to x and y is equal to minus x. That is, as it heads off to infinity here, the entire curve heads off to the line y is equal to x and y is equal to minus x. So that's the dashed lines that I've drawn in. We also have this vector in pink here, which I'm going to rotate round the circle. And as we rotate it round the circle, 
we will see the sine theta and also the cos theta and we'll see the sine theta and the cos theta. So you can see here I've rotated the vector here by this angle which we can call theta. Now we can get the sine of this angle theta is going to be the distance to the x-axis and the cosine of the angle theta is going to be the distance from here to the y-axis. Now equivalently the hyperbolic sine, so that's the sine, is going to be the distance from here to the x-axis and the hyperbolic cos would be the distance from here to the y-axis. Now the circular angle theta is going to be given by twice the area of this sector. And the hyperbolic angle phi is going to be given by twice the area of this sector. And you can see here they're going to be different angles. So if I increase this round to 180 degrees, you'll see that this tends towards the asymptote y is equal to x. Now we could do the same for the negative part of the axis. So we could head this way and you can see that it heads towards the other asymptote which is y is equal to minus x. Now I've also drawn in the sine function here. So this is the sine function on the negative y-axis and as we move ahead around the other direction you'll see the sine function in the positive axis. So this is the sine function here in green. So we could draw in the entire sine function which is equal to this function here. So the function we have here is our sine function. So all our sine function is, is this height here. Now we can do the same for the cosh function and the tanch function. Now we'll just quickly put in the cosh function and the tanch function. So the cosh function is in white here. And it just looks like this here. So this is the cosh function. And you can see how that's generated from this simulation. If you were to say, for example, head, put this back to uh, zero degrees. So if that's sitting at zero, then you can see that the cosh is given by this distance here. Well, this distance here is just a value of one. So this distance one is going to be that height there, which is one. Now, as we increase the angle, then it means that the distance from here to here is just increasing. So it means the height from here to here is increasing. And you can see as it heads towards our 180 degrees, then it heads towards this asymptote. And you can see that the height is going to just continually increase. And again, you can work with the other direction as well. And the same will be true in the other direction. Now we can do the same for the tanch function. And this is the tanch function here. So let's go ahead and we'll put the sine and the cosh and the tanch functions together in one graph. So this is our sine function. This is our cosh function, and this is our tanch function. These are the three functions we want to model using our Cordic algorithm. The sinh x function, the cosh x function, and the tanch x function. Now, another way of writing these functions down are in terms of the exponential function. 
And this is going to be very handy for us whenever we generate the exponential function using the quartic algorithm. So our sine she x is the same as e to the x minus e to the minus x of 2, cos she x is e to the x plus e to the minus x of 2, and we can work out our tan she x by dividing our sine she by our, our cos, and it gives us this identity here. So let's quickly put these identities into the graphical calculator, and we'll see these curves appearing. And that will finish us for this video, and on the next video, we'll go on and have a look at the inverse of these functions. We will start off with the sine she x function, and that's given by e to the x, and we also have an e to the minus x. We then subtract one from the other, and then we divide by two, and that gives us the function here in green, which is the sinh function. Now, if I were to plot the sinh function out, then you can see it sits right over the top of the green function. So this is the sinh function in terms of the exponential. Now let's look at the cos. It's given by e to the x, and we have e to the minus x, and then we add both of them together, and then we divide by 2. And this gives us the function here in green, which is the cos function. So let's actually plot the cos function out. And you can see here that it sits right on top. So this is the cos function in terms of the exponential function. Finally, the tanj function is given by this expression here. We're going to have an e to the x on the top line and an e to the minus x on the top line. We're going to subtract one from the other. And we'll have e to the x minus e to the minus x. Now, on the bottom line, we're going to have the e to the x plus e to the minus x, which is this curve here. And then we're going to divide both of these curves out and we're going to be left with the final curve, which is the tanj function. And if I actually plot the tanj function, it will sit right on top of this curve here. So you can see here we've generated the tanj function using the exponential functions. Now these are going to be very handy for us whenever we continue with the quartic algorithm and we want to generate the exponential function. So that's all for this video. In the next video, we'll take the three new functions we have, our sinh, our cosh, and our tanj, and we'll generate their inverses. That is the arc sinh, arc cosh, and arc tanj. And we'll then go ahead and we'll simulate or we'll generate these using the quartic algorithm. So that's all for this video. Thank you for listening. I'll get you on the next video. Goodbye.